here we go. So we want to talk about gratitude. And it's, it's a, a simple, simple enough word, and, and it means the state of being grateful, or it has to do with a thankfulness. And that, of course, is Webster's definition. But we, we, want, to be, we want to have gratitude in our lives. And, and you know, as, as you might be wondering, where, where did you get the idea for a sermon on gratitude? And, well, the scriptures, but, but sometimes sermon ideas come from strange places. And I was listening to an interview um, earlier this week, and a person had said something that in, during that interview that struck a chord with me, and I thought, you know, that'll preach. And as I mentioned this morning, you know, uh, many of the things that we see in, in our popular culture, the truths, something that is really true can be said by popular culture in the world today, but in, in every case, the Lord said it first. The truth is something that the Lord has given us, and he said these things first. And, but the, the idea for this lesson came from a, 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 an interview with Michael J. Fox. And uh, he said, if you know anything about this uh, man, he's dealt with some health issues these past years and uh, health issues that in all likelihood will take his life, his physical life, uh, from him. And that is something that he's had to deal with for some time. And he's, in speaking with his interviewer, he said, you know, with gratitude, optimism is sustainable. And, and I, I got to thinking about that statement. And, and it really, uh, there, there's a lot to unpack there. If we, are, if we have gratitude towards the one who saved us, who has given us the opportunity for everlasting life, you know, we can be optimistic in our lives. When we look around us, there's an all sorts of reasons to lose our optimism. We can look and turn on the news, and we can hear about all these things going on in the world. And as many have said, uh, they'll allow their minds to go to a place and say, well, why would God allow these things? Why would I follow a God that allows all these horrible, awful things to happen? But when you stop and think about what we have, every human being, we know, that, we know that the Lord makes it to rain on the just and the unjust. Every person alive is reaping some bit of a blessing from the Lord. To take, of course, full, uh, to take full advantage of the blessings offered by the Lord, of course, we know we must be in Christ. But as we think about gratitude, you know, this, this statement about gratitude, this idea of gratitude allowing us to be optimistic, no matter what comes about in our lives, you know, it really gets to the heart of an issue that mankind has always faced. Mankind tends to be fickle and selfish and to allow doubt to creep in into our hearts. It happened with uh, many times in the scriptures that we can look at, and we're going to look at some tonight. We're going to look at some tonight, and, and uh, I hope that this lesson is helpful to you, and that you can walk out of here with a little bit more gratitude for the things the Lord has done in your life. But remember, that with all truth, again, God said it first. That's the important takeaway that we want to remember as we go through this, this lesson. As is up on the screen there, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, we read, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, speaking to the church at Thessalonica, uh, th this is the idea that we have to, we, we can apply this to our lives today that no matter what our circumstance here on this physical earth and in this physical life, we need to be those that are able to give thanks. Be thankful for the breath of life that we have within us, the ability to wake up this morning, 
the ability to, to move and to walk, the ability to do whatever you can do. And to varying degrees, we can all do different things, and some of us can't do some things. At some point in our lives, we might, we, we might be struck down in some way, and we might not be able to do all of the things that we can do now. But even then, we need to give thanks for the things that the Lord has allowed us. Most of all, that he's allowed us access to everlasting life through his son, Jesus. That sacrifice, that perfect sacrifice that was once for all given for all mankind. You know, when we, when we speak of gratitude, you know, it, we realize that gratitude is necessary for faith that leads to hope. People put faith in all sorts of things today. People put faith in, you know, if you drove here in a car, you put a little bit of faith in your car to be able to get you here. Uh, we put faith in, in our banking institution in some way that they will uh, guard our, our, our money. We put faith in our friends and neighbors that they uh, will not betray you and that they will be there to help you at times. And we put faith in all sorts of things. Sometimes people put faith in things that fail. And anything that is of a, a, a human nature, of course, can fail. Because there's not a human being on this earth that is perfect. The only one that ever walked the earth was Christ. You know, it's, it's just necessary for, uh, it, this gratitude is necessary to have that faith that leads to hope. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We, we understand that from Romans 10 at verse 17. You know, in, we understand that the word informs us of God. The word informs us as to what God's desire is for us. The word informs us about how we should act, how we should conduct ourselves. And when we are informed, then we become knowledgeable about who he is. As I mentioned this morning in Acts 2, those on the day of Pentecost, uh, to, to bring them up again, you know, once they were informed about Christ, their faith grew. They understood the, 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 the weight of what they had done. Being informed, they made an informed decision to, to then follow Christ. You know, sometimes we forget who we are and who God is, and consequently we act sometimes without gratitude towards the Lord. Sometimes we, uh, just, like, uh, just like a child who who is ungrateful for the things that, that they've been given. Have you ever, have you ever witnessed a, a spoiled child that just wasn't happy about things that they've had? Uh, I, I've seen uh, videos of, of young, young people opening presents at Christmas time or a birthday and it not being the thing that they wanted and they get upset and they kick and scream and throw things around. What, a, what an awful mindset to have to not have gratitude for that gift that was given to them but sometimes we forget that that most precious gift of of that ability to obtain everlasting life was given to all mankind if they yet obey sometimes we forget who we are sometimes we act without gratitude not realizing that just by existing on this earth, having the breath of life that was breathed into mankind in the very beginning that continues through to this day, the abilities that we have, however great or small they might be, there's something to be grateful for because there's somebody that didn't get the same chances as you. There's somebody that can't do what you can do now and wishes that they could. You know, I, I know people that have lost sight and uh, they, they wish that they could see again. People that can no longer walk wish that they could walk again. How frustrating it is when something like that is taken away. But we still have something to be thankful for. We still have our lives to be thankful for. And more than that, 
that life that is offered to all mankind. Not for anything that we can do to pay for that gift of everlasting life. It is that free gift of God, but we must be obedient to him. And when we think about this idea of gratitude, you know, it, or maybe I should have said thinking of these ideas of ingratitude, think of Jonah. If you go to the book of Jonah, and go to the book of Jonah chapter 2, Jonah chapter 2, and, and we look there and, and we see in the beginning that Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish's belly. We, we know what happened to Jonah. He was swallowed by a fish. He tried to get away from the Lord, but to no avail. And so he said in verse 2, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me, and all your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me even to my soul. The deep closed around me, weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains, the earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. You know, Jonah had a problem there. Jonah wasn't grateful for the things that he'd had, that he had, he had an ability. He had abilities and things that, that were given to him by the Lord his very life. And when that eye-opening experience happened to Jonah, he, he changed his mind. He realized that he had some things to be thankful for. He realized that those things were now taken away. He got to the lowest point, and then he begged the Lord to save him. And the Lord did so. Sometimes we need a wake-up call. Hopefully, we don't need to be swallowed by a fish to, to get that wake-up call to understand that gratitude is something that we need. As we continue to think about uh, gratitude, we can't help but think of Jonah, I mean Job. Uh, when, if we think of Job and think of what, what happened to him, all of, the, all of his things were, were taken away. And, and as things got tough, as things got tough, he started to lose a little bit of gratitude. He never, he never gave up on the Lord. He stayed strong in that regard. But he started to lose a little bit of his, uh, of his gratitude. Wishing that he had never been born was one of the things that he had said. But the Lord answered him and, and kind of set him straight. You know, and sometimes, you know, of course, we need to be set straight from time to time. Let's go over to the book of Job and just look at the last little bit there. going to go to Job 38. Job chapter 38. And the Lord speaks to him. And uh, if we look at what the Lord says, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. You know, this is, this is after Job has had his little, his little episode of, of ingratitude. And the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Words without knowledge. There's, there's something that will preach as well. How many times have we allowed words to come out of our mouth without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. Verse 3. I will question you and you shall answer me. 
Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? Now you can continue reading uh, the rest of that and, and see what the Lord said to him, but it was obvious here that the Lord was telling Job and showing him that he needed to have a little bit of gratitude, that he needed to remember the Lord. Even in the, the difficult trials and tribulations that may come in our lives, hopefully none as, as uh, life-altering as Job. But we can also look at Job and realize that he's one that we can take an example from of how in many ways we should conduct ourselves uh, when the hard times come. Not ever uh, forsaking the Lord. Not ever blaming the Lord. Sometimes we battle with this ingratitude, but there is hope. You know, think of Moses. Think of Moses, and, and let's turn to Exodus chapter 4. And uh, think of what Moses said when he was asked to help the Lord's people. And all the things and all the excuses that he, that he came up with. In Exodus chapter 4 and verse 11, So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have, I not, have not I the Lord? Now this is, of course, after Moses told him that he's not an eloquent speaker. He had all these excuses that he had uh, coming up against the Lord. In verse 13 he said, But, O oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may spend, ascend. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well, and look, he is also coming out to meet you. In verse uh, 15, he says, Now you shall go speak to him, and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth, and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. And that's the whole point. Realizing that the Lord gave us breath and the Lord gave us life. We should, be we should be grateful for that. And then also understand that the Lord can teach us. Of course, the Lord knows what our shortfalls, our shortcomings are. Of course, he knows where we can excel. And he knows how to use us best. And we just need to not be afraid to step out there and give it a try. And as long as we have the truth on our side, as long as we have the word rightly divided with us as we carry out whatever it is that comes across our eyes in our life, in our life whatever, whatever we find to do, we need to do it heartily to the Lord. You know, the repentant, though we already mentioned a few moments ago, the repentant on the day of Pentecost, uh, you know, they, they had to... Uh, come to a realization of gratitude as well. If you go over to Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 37. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 37, you start to, you start to get the picture. You start to see what they, what they are coming to grips with. At verse 37, they, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Again, they were informed about God. They started to realize what they had done. That idea of, of now I need to change the way that I'm thinking. I need to realize what God has done for me. Be grateful for that. Grateful enough that I'm willing to do what he asks. Having that change of mind and repentance there in verse 38. And the being willing to follow through with the commands of the Lord to be baptized for the remission of sins. You know, as you continue to, to read 
uh, through the rest of, of that passage through chapter 2. You know, they, uh, in verse 46, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. They became grateful to the Lord and trusted in him. You know, many of these, as I mentioned this morning, and we've mentioned several times before, these people had, in, in believing and following after Christ, some of them gave up their very life as they knew it. Their, perhaps, their job, their home, their, the normalcy that was in their life. Some of these were, were far from home. And so they leaned upon each other. And they found out just how the Lord would provide for them if they just had gratitude enough to seek after him. You know, and, and, and again, when you, look at, when you look at Paul, you go over just a few more verses, a few more chapters in, uh, in Acts to chapter 9, uh, starting at verse 18. We read, and this is the speaking of, of Saul and his conversion, uh, immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then, Paul spent, then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the, he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. You know, he went through, and you can read further, if, I'm sure you most are uh, familiar with this conversion story, this account, uh, and understanding that he realized who Christ is. He then realized that he needed to change. He had to come to grips with the idea that without Christ, he could do, he could do nothing. And therein lies that grasping a hold of that gratitude and, and being thankful for the things that the Lord has done, allowing you to understand who he is. It's, it's kind of tied together. When we say that we have faith, when we say that we have faith, but then we fail to be thankful for the very simplest things that the Lord has given to us that we can put to use in the Lord's kingdom, then we, we miss that mark. We miss that mark of being pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And there are, of course, many, many more people that we could pull from the scriptures, the accounts from the scriptures, and, and talk about their moments of ingratitude that led to gratitude and a change of heart. But as we, as we continue uh, through our lives, you know, we need to, have that genuine understanding of Christ's sacrifice, leading to that genuine gratitude. The honest heart becomes grateful with this knowledge and with this understanding and yields to Christ's authority. Now, as we mention all the time, Matthew 28 at verse 18 tells us that Christ has all authority. And again, that doesn't leave us any. If we honestly look at these things, if we are genuine in our faith, if we are genuine in our understanding of, of Christ, we will be grateful. We will then put that to good use and yield to his authority. If you're sitting here today and you've heard the word, your faith is growing within you and you're willing to confess Christ before men. If you're willing to repent of your sins and turn away from those things that separate you from Christ. If you're willing to change directions in your life. Not that, not that you'll ever be perfect. Not that you'll never make a mistake. But that you're willing to walk on that path with your eyes focused squarely on Christ. Willing to uh, forsake those things that would separate you from that path. If you're willing to make that step and be obedient to baptism, be obedient to that command to be baptized, just as those on the day of Pentecost, 
just as those, again, that we can read, up, read about throughout the New Testament. When they came to that knowledge of truth, they were obedient unto, ba- uh, unto death. Obedient unto that death in baptism, that death of the sinful self, being raised to walk in that newness of life in a like manner to Christ. If you're willing to do that, then the waters are ready behind us. Please make that, uh, make that desire known. If you'd like to study further with us, we'd be glad, of course, to study with you. If you uh, previously have put on Christ in baptism and found that the road has been difficult and you've fallen off the path and you, you require the prayers of the saints to strengthen you, that you might be returned to faithfulness in the eyes of God, then by all means, we stand as a family in Christ ready to help you do that, ready to pray for you and with you, to be a shoulder to cry on and a hand to help you out of the difficult times. That's why the Lord made his church. It's one of the reasons, the vehicle that leads uh, anybody that desires to follow Christ leads them to heaven. The church is the vehicle chosen by the Lord. It's his church. And if you're willing to take those steps, if you're willing to put on Christ in baptism, or if you need the prayers of the saints, let that be known as we stand and sing.